FBI raid produces thousands of stolen Native American bones in 91-year-old missionary in Oppos. SI For the first time, the FBI is speaking out about seizing artifacts from a vast collection gathered by an Indiana man, Don Miller, in 2014. For the first time, the FBI is speaking out about seizing artifacts from a vast collection gathered by an Indiana man, Don Miller, in 2014. By all accounts, the amateur museum that Donald C. Miller ran out of his home in the cornfields of central Indiana wasn't exactly a secret. Newspaper reports tens of thousands of rare cultural artifacts were on display including pre-Columbian pottery, Ming Dynasty jade, an Egyptian sarcophagus and a dugout canoe that had traveled down the Amazon River. And the eccentric not this man, he's an amazing piece of history, Amy Moore, a friend of Miller's from church, told the Indianapolis Star in 2014. He's an artifact, but when the FBI's art crime detectives showed up and began sifting through Miller's extensive collection in April 2014, suspecting that many of the relics carefully laid out in the cabinets had been obtained illegally in violation of antiquities laws, they came across something that horrified them roughly 2,000 human bones, nearly all of which are believed to have been taken from ancient Native American burial sites. To the best of our knowledge right now, those 2,000 bones represent about 500 human beings, Tim Carpenter, who heads the FBI's art theft unit, told CBS News in an interview that aired Tuesday. It's very staggering. Miller, a Christian missionary and ham radio operator who claimed to have worked on the Manhattan Project, died at 91 in 2015, nearly a year after the FBI raided his home and seized roughly 42,000 items whose cultural value was said to be immeasurable. Up until this week, the FBI's art crime team is trying to identify the rightful owners of more than 7,000 seized artifacts from locations spanning the globe. The artifacts, the FBI's art crime team is trying to identify the rightful owners of more than 7,000 seized artifacts from locations spanning the globe. The artifacts, talking Tuesday to CBS this morning, Carpenter said that, before his death, Miller admitted that he had come by many of the items illegally and that he had gone on unsanctioned archaeological digs all over the country and the world. He also came to, for instance, CBS's Anna Werner asked, why would anyone have so many human bones? I don't know, Carpenter replied, shaking his head. I truly don't know. The ghoulish crime of digging up long dormant graves has been an ongoing source of frustration for Native American communities. Toward the end of the night, for the first time, the FBI is speaking out about seizing artifacts from a vast collection gathered by an Indiana man, Don Miller, in 2014. For the first time, the FBI is speaking out about seizing artifacts from a vast collection gathered by an Indiana man, Don Miller, in 2014. All too often here, we have been treated as curiosities rather than a people, Pete Coffey, a tribal official with North Dakota's Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara Nation, told CBS. They could very well be. Coffey is one of the tribal leaders now working with the FBI to return the misappropriated remains to their original resting places, CBS reported. Experts say they, until Tuesday, the FBI had remained circumspect about the 2014 raid, which did not result in Miller's arrest or any charges being brought against him. At the time, Robert A. Jones, the FBI special agent in charge of the case, told reporters at the time that Miller's methods for procuring some of those objects had violated multiple laws and treaties, but also undercut that claim by acknowledging that the relevant statutes might not have been in place yet. Miller had started advocates for criminal justice reform and libertarian groups such as the Cato Institute were quick to criticize what they saw as an overly aggressive approach from the FBI, arguing that the government had offered no evidence that Miller had done anything illegal. The FBI plan, nearly five years later, the investigation is ongoing, and experts anticipate it could take decades to sort through the thousands of objects that the FBI seized since determining their legality means first figuring out where and when each was purchased. Some artifacts, before splashy headlines in the national media labeled him a real-life Indiana Jones, 
Miller was known to Waldron and surrounding Rush County as a larger-than-life figure who had a penchant for telling unverifiable stories and playing a 1927 Wurlitzer organ to entertain his guests. Speaking to the star, all the while, he filled up their home with historical curios, including a World War II-era Nazi helmet and a shrunken head whose provenance he did not fully explain. A former co-worker told The Star in 2014 that Miller had used his ample vacation time at Naval Avionics to conduct amateur archaeological expeditions in far-flung parts of the world, and that he often came back with wild tales about his misadventures, from winding up in a Mexican jail to being interrogated by Libyan soldiers who thought he had been sent by the CIA. While those stories, in the months before his death, Miller had retreated from public life, residents told The Star. When a news crew, by all accounts, the amateur museum that Donald C. Miller ran out of his home in the cornfields of central Indiana wasn't exactly a secret. Newspaper report. <laughs> Smoking on cooking the hot pot. Fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Looking up, open the park pot.